morning, huddlers. Good morning, huddlers. I'm beginning today with a quote from our dear friend, Steven Spielberg. Technology can be our best friend, and technology can also be the biggest party pooper in our lives. It interrupts our own story, interrupts our ability to have a thought or daydream, to imagine something wonderful, because we're too busy bridging the walk from the cafeteria back to the office on the cell phone. Steven Spielberg. Wow. Wow. It hits you. It's beautiful. Good morning, good morning, good morning, huddlers. Wherever you're sitting this morning, whether you're in Africa, Haiti, Colombia, Venezuela, Saudi Arabia, the United States, I am glad you're here. We love you. Here at the Daily Huddle, we say how you begin your day. Very well gives you the rest of your day and how you live today gives you the rest of your life. So thank you for creating the time to be here to create the life you want and assist the ones in your life to do the same. Welcome. Today we have a conversation for you about something that you do, that we do every day that's addictive and impacts our health in ways that we can't have been imagined. And we've got two fantastic experts here to lead the conversation with us. But before we dive into that, I want to ask you a few questions. My favorite question person is Andrea. Good morning, Andrea. Good morning, Sorel. And tell me, where are you? Sorel, I am where I need to be, which is right here. Right here. No other place you could be. No other Move place. Move an inch, you'd be right here. Sit there all day, you'd be right here. Oh my God, Stacy, welcome back. It's great to see you. Tell me, how are you and who are you going to hug today? I am in my best Nina Simone. I am feeling good. <laughs> um, who am I gonna hug today? I am going to hug my 24 year old son who is, um, oh, who just opened another, uh, play performance I'm going to see tonight. I'm gonna to hug him and congratulate him and tell him that I'm so very, very proud of him. And he's gonna take that hug and even though he doesn't want it. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Thank you, Stacy. Good morning, Stan. Tell me what time is it? Man, the time is now, man. Daily huddle time. <laughs> Daily huddle time. time. It's probably now. time to get on the plane, too, and come down to Snellville. Yeah, We're almost, missing you down here, man. <laughs> almost. Be there a couple of days, God willing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> good deal. Good deal. Well, welcome to the Daily Huddle. Giovanni, I want to give you the honors to introduce our partners, Dr. Nidhi Gupta and Tara Heaton. Sorrel, welcome. Thank you, Sorrel. <laughs> I was so ready for that, Sorrel. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Whatever you do, Dr. Nidhi Gupta will hold you accountable. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sorrel. Thank you, Dr. Nidhi Gupta. Thank you, Tara, for being here with a conversation that I am passionate about, truly passionate about, what we do every day that's addictive and impacts our health. And I think no better human beings in the planet, no better human being in the planet can take us in a journey to understand this question better. So I'm just going to say a tip of the iceberg of Dr. Gupta and then a little bit of Tara, just the tip of the iceberg of who they are. Dr. Gupta is a pediatric endocrinologist at Vanderbilt Children's Hospital or was at Vanderbilt Children's Hospital in Nashville. She's the founder of Freedom. She was born and raised in India at medical school at Maulana Azad Medical College in New Delhi. 
Pediatric Residency at Children's Hospital of Michigan and Pediatric Endocrinology Fellowship at Mayo Clinic, Register, Minnesota. She's a recipient of multiple Young Investor Awards and author of numerous peer review articles and book chapter, two book chapters, Mother of Two Children, Guiding Principles, Knowledge, and Balance. I'm going to say just a little bit about Tara. Tara is the owner of Endpoint Communications. She's developed a platform called Talk to the Brain by applying her years of neuroscience research to her <laughs> years of leadership, sales, and presentations experience. I love these two amazing human beings. Thank you both for being here. Thank you for opening your life to the possibility of this conversation, given that it's so timely. More and more and more people are experiencing anxiety, depression, isolation, loneliness, and we can't quite put our finger on what's the source of the whole thing. More children are being impacted by this. Their lives, the way they are, their sense of aliveness, their sense of playfulness, and we can't quite put a finger on, in, on all of it. So I am really, really excited to start this conversation. And I'll start with you, Dr. Gupta. So um, what is it that we do every day that is addictive and how, how does it impact our health? Can you give us a little intro on that? Absolutely. Thank you, Giovanni. So the answer to that is not our devices. It's not the devices that we are addicted to. It's the content that we access on the devices that is addictive. So to begin with, we have to stop blaming our poor little devices, the smartphones. They, they are just a medium to convey all of that information to us, but it's our choice what we choose to access on those devices, the content, the apps, the emails, the distraction, the entertainment, the video games, the shopping, a lot. There is a lot of content. <clears throat> so the content is what needs to be curated, needs to be personalized, needs to be very carefully supervised and deleted if it starts impacting our health and well being. Devices are not to be blamed, the content is. The thing about the content that we access on our devices is that the content developers know exactly how our brain works. They know exactly what is it about our brain that we are craving for. How does the neurotransmitter, the dopamine, all of the other neurotransmitters, serotonin, hormones like oxytocin, how do they play with each other? to keep us wanting more and more and more. So it motivates the content developers to develop content, which is attention grabbing, which is addictive, and it keeps us coming back for more. Mm. When we keep going back for more and more in that process, Giovanni, we unconsciously on a very subtle level forego something else that needs to happen in our life. We forego some other essential activities that must happen because the pull of the online world is so strong that we're not able to resist it. And in that process, we ignore or we try to push away what pleasures or what joys the offline world, the real world has to offer us. And that's where it starts impacting our health and well-being. Mm. Now, Dr. Gupta, you said something, and I want to include Tara in this based on something you said that I want, that I am challenged with, Dr. Gupta. Uh, Tara, is it, is it truly my choice? Is it really a conscious choice I'm making to go into the content, the content as, as Dr. Gupta was pointing to, it is designed in such a way that grabs the attention, my short span attention of three seconds at this point. And is it really consciously Giovanni making a choice or is the impact to our brain so large that one could say that it's not even my choice. It's like where, where my brain is going. Delighted that you asked that question and phrased it that way, because we are so hard on ourselves. We, we find ourselves unable to continue on with certain behaviors, which we know are harmful. And I, I doubt there's a person out there that 
doesn't believe that they should put their phone down and, and walk away from their devices. And they try to, and it's difficult, just like it's hard to walk away from that cocktail at night or that sugary donut in the morning. All these things um, give us a sense of pleasure. And until we really understand what pleasure is and pleasure versus joy, it's really hard to be enlightened and empowered to just simply put ourselves on a, a wireless mobile device diet. And that's the beauty of a lot of my work is certainly it's informed communication and my work, but it's also informed behavior in general, how we learn, how we show up, why we make the choices we do without thinking. So the answer is no, it's not a conscious, it's not a conscious effort. What we're after is a hit of pleasure. It is that simple. And the easiest way to get that little hit of pleasure is to grab that wireless mobile device. There are other ways to get pleasure, healthy activities and negative ones. They're all just what Dr. Gupta talked about. They're all causing us to go after that dopamine, that little awake, that alive feeling. We can get it from another Netflix series or we can get it from turning on the music and dancing. And once we understand that, we're empowered. Mm. Wow. Wow. So, 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 so simple yet so complex to get a grip off, right? Because uh, what I'm hearing is in some degree, I'm hearing it this way, Sorel, and I don't know um, how do you hear it, but in some degree, I'm hearing it like I have this conscious, um, con I have this consciousness of what my brain is looking for, this pleasure. My brain is looking for that. And and if I could, in some way, direct my brain to the right kind of pleasure triggers, then I have a healthy life. I have a healthy lifestyle. Um, but it seems to me, Sorel, that my brain, for some reason, and I don't know if it's, if it's just that I'm immature or human being, does not want the healthy triggers. It wants the unhealthy triggers. What are your thoughts on this, Sorel? Uh as you were speaking to Tara and uh, Dr. Gupta, I was thinking to myself, there are people like me out there that are probably saying this to themselves. I'm a grown man. I'm a grown woman. I, I'm not going to get addicted to my phone. In fact, I'm not addicted to my phone. So uh, what I'm but, seeing but, is but, that... But, the, but hold, hold on a second. I got, I got a text coming. <laughs> 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 precisely right <laughs> so uh, what is the addiction that we're pointing to and, and the reason we felt it was it, it's that critical to have an entire event this saturday to address the whole issue what's critical about the addiction is that most people are unaware and don't know that they're addicted so uh, we're here sounding an alarm. I'm, I'm claiming that most people don't know that they're addicted. They don't know how the addiction happens, how, how, how the manufacturers of the apps actually get them sucked in, and they don't connect the real physical and emotional impacts to that addiction and the fact that they go to those mobile devices and the apps to seek pleasure, display something. And now there's an impact on health that they're not even making the connection. So Dr. Gupta, in your experience, what do you see is the impact on both physical health and mental health? Absolutely. So Ralph, when you talk about the fact that most people do not even acknowledge that a problem exists, that is the biggest barrier that I'm facing in solving this problem of wireless mobile device addiction. It's like being that ostrich that has its head in the sand, pretending that the enemy can't see it. If the ostrich can't see the enemy, the enemy can't see the ostrich either, right? There, are, there is a spectrum of wireless mobile device addiction. Now, addiction by itself when you use that term, it comes with a lot of negative connotations. It's not easy for anyone to confess that I'm addicted because with that word addiction, it comes with a lot of baggage. 
right? So there is a spectrum of this habit. What, is that, what does that spectrum look like? Wireless mobile device use, where we are actually able to use our devices to improve our productivity, increase our efficiency, stay truly connected with family, which might be halfway across the world, keep our lives organized, stay up to date with our children's activities. We cannot survive without the devices and that is not the goal. The goal is not to throw devices out the window. The goal is moderation and balance. So on that spectrum, wireless mobile device use is on one end of the spectrum. Then it transfers to wireless mobile device overuse, wireless mobile device dependency, and wireless mobile device addiction. So at Reconnect 2022 tomorrow, we are going to lead the audience in getting more insight into where they lie, where we all lie on that spectrum. There are many, many questionnaires out there that can help us get a better insight into that behavior. But unless we acknowledge that a problem exists, we will hardly be motivated to find a solution or to find someone who can help us find a solution. So acknowledgement, it lies at the bottom line. That is the foundation of fixing a behavior of trying to find an alternative habit, trying to find other means of joy in our life so that we can move away from the pleasures of wireless mobile devices. Now your second question, Sorel, about how does it impact our health? And we are going to dig deeper into this in so much more detail tomorrow. But for today, there is solid evidence that excessive screen time is associated with obesity, with sleep disorders, mental health issues, including anxiety, depression, and suicide. And we have solid evidence for this, not just for children, but for adults as well. Now, how does all of this work? We are going to explain all of that tomorrow in such a way that it's going to make fantastic sense and people will walk out of that room feeling empowered to make a change right then, right now. Yeah, and uh, be, beyond uh, health issues, what would you say is the biggest, one of the biggest motivation for people to actually make that change? Tara, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, other than I'm not going to be obese or I'm not going to have emotional, what's one of the biggest incentives to make that switch? The biggest incentive is having more joy in your life. And I'll elaborate on that for just a moment. Um, a friend of mine recently, we were talking about her husband and how he seems unhappy right now. And I said, what makes him happy? And she said, chicken biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, that's not happiness, that's pleasure. Uh, and we don't have time for happiness when we are addicted to pleasure. Pleasure is absolutely part of happiness. I don't know, you. most people know what hedonism is. Uh, Tara, it's, it's, yes. please hang on and say that again. We don't have time <laughs> for, oh my God, that was amazing. We don't have time. We for, don't have time for happiness mm -hmm. because we're addicted to pleasure. Uh, There's no doubt about it. And it, it's, it's not only the cell phone but it, or the mobile device, but is the biggest antagonist in our life. It is truly a global epidemic that we are getting that hit of pleasure, 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 which is keeping us from embracing joy. And I think an easy way to really understand it, because the, the, the point is not to cause people to feel deprived. The point is for them to put the device away so that they can engage in activities and that we are that we are wired to need. Um, I, I mentioned the word hedonism, which is pleasure, right? Most people know about that, but do you know what eudaimonism is? Hmm. If you go back to Aristotle, um, eudaimonia is it's it's joy, it's happiness because it's purpose driven. It's enjoying things that matter, which is the opposite of hedonism. And we need both. And we can't take time to enjoy things that matter when we're totally addicted to pleasure. So that's, that is the biggest reason 
to really lean into this learning. I mean, Dr. Gupta has so much research to share with us that is empowering. And it makes us realize what is missing in our lives because we were spending all that time in this hedonistic pleasure loop. Right, Dr. Gupta? <laughs> yes, absolutely. I'm so glad you brought up the concept of hedonism because one thing that I'm going to discuss tomorrow and it applies not just to wireless mobile devices, Tara. It applies to everything else that we find joy and pleasure in life from. And that is the idea of anhedonia. So just the opposite of hedonism, anhedonia is when we get to a certain level in life where the usual content, the usual food, the usual activities do not give us pleasure anymore. We want something more, something stronger, something more powerful to give us the same level of pleasure. And the content developers know this. And that is why the, once we are done playing level one of video game, well, we don't keep playing level one video game over and over again, because after a certain point, we get bored. We need something more. We need something more violent, something more exciting, something more thrilling, more stimulating to give us the same level of pleasure. So that is something to think about. I Pleasure anymore. We want Jill, you were about to say something. Yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> I got confused here with my own devices here. Uh, I, I, I just got hanged on. And 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 if you're, please go ahead and and uh, unmute yourself and raise your hand so we can include your comment or your question. One uh, one of the things that just it just really hit me, Tara in how you were creating this distinction. And I quite never made it that way. Like the world of difference between happiness and the world of difference between pleasure. And uh, somehow it has it occurred to me my entire life that they were both the same. And most of my anxieties and most of my depressions and most of my low, a lot of my low moments come from my from my, my own inability to distinguish the difference and looking for pleasure, looking for pleasure rather than creating a context for my life that gives me satisfaction and happiness. And, and that was just really brilliant, uh, that, the way to separate that. I'm like, I want to take on that conversation and, and I can see why the world is, is, is dealing with what the, the world is dealing with. So I see somebody's hand, uh, ride number three. That Thanks is Miss Cece. Here. Oh, Come on, Cece. Cece, hey, go ahead, Cece. Guys. Good to hear y'all this morning. Um, I noticed that the word pleasure is temporal. That's why I realized that the pleasure syndrome in the mind wants to be activated. Happiness, on the other hand, is permanent <laughs> if I choose to be happy this day. So happiness to me is what I always desired. Pleasure is just temporal. Ha so that's what I, I, I got out of this. So I pass everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Cece. Thank you. And, uh, you know, point well made. Uh, I, I think, Tara, you've got something about what happens in the brain that can point to that in a very scientific way to anchor people in choosing between pleasure and happiness. Yes, um, I would love to speak to that because the science behind it is absolutely fascinating. Pleasure is easier to get and it's faster. So it, and, and to, in today's world, we are under more stress, more responsibility, more anxiety than ever before. So we crave those pleasure hits. It, 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 and so we can get it from food, from something sweet, something spicy. We can get it from a drink. We can get it from a lot of negative behaviors, but those are the easy behaviors that give us that quick hit of pleasure. But what we're getting are neurotransmitters that are small molecules and they release into our cells very quickly. So just like Duke, Dr. Gupta said, we need more and more and more of those. There are other ways to minimize that addiction 
And that's what we're going to really dig into tomorrow, ways that we do feel a sense of happiness that lasts longer, just like Cece said, and those are more in the world of neuropeptides, which have great hormone qualities, which stay in our physical body. So yes, partly it is choice and it's the way we look at things and the way we think, but there is concrete science behind us behind this that empowers us to really understand how we can make small changes to transform the way we experience life, to give us peace. I would add to that, Chara, when you say it's easy, what, what made me think of is a quote. There are two ways to do anything, the right way and the easy way. So mm. whenever we come to, to that crossroad of making a decision, do I get on the treadmill and sweat? Or do I make myself comfortable on the couch and watch Netflix? It, which one is the easy way and which one is the right way? If we can consciously talk to our brain and convince it that we are the boss and brain is not the boss, that is where we'll be able to decide which route we go and what our destiny is going to be. I love that, it's so inspiring. <laughs> Love it, love it. And uh, I, I especially love how both you, Tara, and Dr. Gupta treat the subject without making us human beings wrong for either being dependent or being addicted to our wireless mobile devices. And I think that's the beauty of this whole conference tomorrow. The idea of coming into an environment where each of you will have the opportunity to acknowledge something that leaves you, I mean, just immensely empowered, empowered to choose, empowered to choose between a quick hit, and we're not punishing anybody for the quick hit. Uh, Tara, you said it very well, hedonism, we need a little bit of that too. But the idea yeah. is to walk into an environment where you leave empowered to create rather than just consume. So I'm looking forward to tomorrow. People are going to be empowered to use their mobile devices in a way that they've never used them before. To use your mobile device to create productivity, to use your mobile device to create tighter, more cohesive relationships, to use your mobile devices to create better health, and to use your mobile devices to even create a better community. That's all possible. So as you mentioned, Dr. Gupta, it's not about the devices themselves. They're not to blame. It's about the apps. And we can create using the apps in a way that creates the world we want. So thank you for being there. I'm inviting each and every one of you listening to go to reconnect.expert and to get yourself there. And if you can't be there, get someone you love there. Their health, their well being depends on it. So does yours. I'll see you there. Jill, how do we want to wrap it all up, brother? Perfect. Awesome. So reconnect.expert. You can sign in in person, so we'll see you there tomorrow, or you can sign virtually. If you're in a different state, in a different country, you can sign up virtually. And so I hope to see you there. I hope to get to know you in this way as well and, and, and explore the conversation, which I really can't wait to be there. Very good. So thank you. Thank you all for being here. And the way we always like to close our daily, daily, daily huddle, which is with seven tenants. The first one is love. Love always, love those who you have an opinion about, love your exes, love your exes, mother, love, love. Eat more, plant-based, get closer to the trees, hug the trees, eat the trees, stress less. Really, it's only one life, really, as far as I know, and the evidence is overwhelming. This is it. Might as well take it easy. Stress less. Smile more, stress your cheeks. It helps you to look younger and in triggers all the endorphins that you need smile exaggerate of course give give all you got pay yourself first and then give give your jealousy away give your forgiveness away forgive give and give keep give it all away you can't take it with you and of course sleep 
make sure you sleep. I say seven hours. If you do eight, you get a bonus. But Sorel says six. I don't know. I say <laughs> sleep. And then finally, move. Move every day, 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes after lunch. Move every day. Move what your mama gave you or what your brother yeah, gave you. shake what God gave you. Yes. yes Thank yes. you very much. <laughs> See you tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern time. I love you. Bye bye. Thank you, Dr. Gupta. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Tara. Everybody. Tara, thank, thank you. you. Have a great thank day, you. Everybody. Thank you, guys. Gupta. See you Dan. tomorrow. Can't bye, wait guys. to meet you. Bye. bye. <laughs>